My wife, Lena, crochets a lot and often gifts it to friends and family. When her second oldest brother got married, she made the bride a shawl to wear over her dress in the evening. The bride loved it, and ever since, Lena's made shawls for everyone in her family getting married. Now Lena's oldest brother, George, is getting married again. Lena doesn't have a relationship with George, as he was abusive to her as a child, but if she has to see him, then she's polite but distant with him. She doesn't want to cut off the rest of her family because of George. I work with George, and while we aren't friends, we are friendly at work. Lena encouraged this. When George got moved to my team, I was going to request a transfer, not wanting to expose Lena to George, as my team do a lot of get-togethers with our significant others. As it's a family wedding, Lena's mom asked her if she could crochet a shawl for George's fiance, and Lena agreed. It was arranged that once it was finished, I would take it to work to give to George, so that Lena didn't have to see him. Earlier this week, the shawl was completed, and I emailed George at work to let him know that I would bring it in today, as the wedding's tomorrow. When I got into work this morning, I gave George the shawl and let him know that Lena and I were looking forward to the wedding. Come lunchtime, Lena called me to let me know that George's fiance had called and told her she was no longer invited to the wedding, citing the place they were having the wedding and the reception at is too small for the number that they have coming, so they're having to make cutbacks. However, I was still invited to the wedding. I was mad at this because they clearly only invited Lena to get a shawl, which to me is just rude. If they had asked Lena outright to make one, she probably would have done so because she loves to crochet. On my way out of work, I noticed George wasn't at his desk, but the shawl was. I was still mad that they had used Lena to get a shawl, and I just shoved it in my work bag. I left a note on his desk, telling George since Lena was no longer invited, the shawl and I would no longer be attending either. On my way home, I told Lena what I had done and asked her if she wanted to go out instead, so not to waste having a sitter. Lena was upset that I had taken the shawl because it was causing an uproar in her family group chat, where people were calling her petty because I took it back. Lena wants me to give it back. I don't think I should. They don't deserve Lena's kindness. However, at the same time, I don't want Lena to be upset with me over George and a shawl. Am I the idiot for taking back the shawl? Edit. I've messaged the group chat, letting them know that I took it. And if they should be angry at anyone, then it should be me. But I would also do it again because no one gets to be an idiot to my wife. Not the idiot. OP, actually, you're the rock star for standing up to this childish behavior by George and his fiance on behalf of your wife. The day before the wedding, and they do a head count for a wedding? No way. I bet if you had told them that you'd bring the shawl to the wedding. They would not have uninvited Lena. There is a slight touch of idiocy doing this without your wife's permission, but again, in my opinion, that's what made you the rock star. Lena needs to stand up for herself, though, and not be a darn doormat for her family. If they think it's fine that Lena gets uninvited, but thinks Lena's petty for you taking the shawl back, then why on earth is there still any contact with them? Keep the darn thing and convince her she owes them nothing. Why aren't they upset about him uninviting his own sister to his wedding? If she insists on you giving it back, just tell her you lost it or whatever, and she shouldn't let others walk all over her. She's placating them while they mistreat her. Exactly. Why would OP, the unrelated husband, be invited but not the younger sister? They waited until they got what they wanted. And then got rid of the person her brother clearly hates. He probably gets a thrill when OP is nice to him, thinking he's got one over on his sister. You're standing up for your wife, even if she can't stand up for herself because of years of treatment like this from her brother and family. Update: Am I the idiot for taking back a shawl my wife made after she was uninvited from the wedding? So. Everyone will be glad to know that I've not given George back the shawl. I mean, part of the reason I haven't given it back 
is because he's on his honeymoon. I hope it has rained for the two weeks, but even if he wasn't, I still wouldn't give it back. Later that evening, Lena apologized for being mad at me. She said that she should never have agreed to make the shawl in the first place and was grateful I had taken it back. Lena and I had a long discussion about her family and how they treat her. I told her that I would always stand up for her when it comes to her family because I will stand strong when she can't. I asked her what she thought about going lower contact. We were already low contact with George, his now wife, and her mom. Lena said that she wanted to go no contact with George, his wife, her mom, and to go low contact with everyone else but her second oldest brother and his wife. We'll call them Michael and Sarah. And has shown me that she's left and deleted the chat. We both have blocked everyone but Michael and Sarah. I'm going to wait a couple of weeks before I broach therapy for Lena again. I just want the dust to settle a bit as I don't want her to feel pushed into anything. The story the bride-to-be gave Lena about there not being enough space was nonsense. Michael confirmed that George had told him weeks ago that they were well under numbers for their venue. It was just a bad attempt at a power move. I spoke with my manager and told him that Lena had made a shawl for George's wife, but they had given a bad reason for uninviting her to the wedding the day before the wedding, and I took it back. When I told my manager this, he sighed heavily before telling me that he wished I hadn't taken the shawl back because George could make things difficult for me, but that he would have done exactly the same thing because George was a nightmare. I told him that I'd like to move to another team because it wasn't good for Lena to have to be around him. He told me to leave it with him and he'd see what he could do. I heard back on Monday that I'd be getting moved to another team at the end of the week. The other team is desperate for someone. The day of the wedding, Michael called Lena and asked what our plans had been for the day. Michael knew that Lena wasn't invited to the wedding and rightly assumed that I wouldn't go if she wasn't welcome. Lena told him that we had planned to go out for dinner and drinks. Michael told her that sounded like a plan and to text him where we were going for dinner. Michael and Sarah had decided to skip the wedding after seeing the meltdown of George, his wife, and their mom in the group chat. Apparently, they continued spouting abuse at Lena, even though she had left the group chat. When the family turned on me and our children was when Michael and Sarah decided they weren't going to the wedding at all. They were just going to go to the ceremony after Lena had been uninvited. Michael had seen George's abuse of Lena firsthand. He had tried to protect Lena when he could, but there was only so much he could do as a child himself, and he didn't want to be on the receiving end of George's temper either. As an adult, he took the first chance he had to move away from his family while only maintaining contact with Lena. So he went out with Michael and Sarah, having a much better night than we would have done at the wedding. There was no snide comments, no belittling, nothing. Lena was happy as she got to see Sarah, and that was what she was looking forward to. Lena being happy was all I wanted. It's all I ever want, my family to be happy. Both Michael's and Sarah's phones did keep going off all night long, as mother-in-law and George kept messaging them, angry at their non-attendance, especially after Michael posted a picture of the four of us together having drinks on Facebook with a caption about how he was choosing Lena over George going forward because she doesn't use people to get what they want, like George did, over a crochet shawl. Michael admitted to me later that he did this to anger George because he'd have a meltdown at the reception, and then his in-laws could see what an idiot he actually is. Given the gleeful messages I got from Michael last week, after we had heard back from a cousin who attended, George had a complete meltdown. Lena considered unraveling the shawl, but she found it difficult to undo all her hard work, which I understand. After talking with Sarah about what to do with it, she's decided that she's going to keep it, but she'll dye it. Michael suggested that she wear it to the family Christmas. Michael and I are at the same level of pettiness as I had previously suggested that I could wear it to work when George is back. I didn't tell Lena many people were calling her a doormat or saying she needs to grow a spine. 
Those people clearly haven't had their spirit completely broken by people who are meant to love them unconditionally or were completely cut out of family events. When George graduated from uni, Lena was left at home. She was eight years old and left home alone all day. Christmas was spent mostly in her bedroom because her grandmother didn't want Lena around as her presence would just upset George. Until she was 14, then she would sneak out and spend it with me and my family. Lena was just left out of everything. Her dad used to work away from home a lot, so we had no idea what was going on. He just assumed Lena liked her own space. Not that she would just stay in her room, because she was used to being neglected by her family. Anyway, we're going no contact with George, his wife, and Lena's mom. Lena's keeping the shawl, and we will discuss therapy in the future. Thank you all. I'm so glad to see this update. Glad Lena has you in her corner, and glad you all got together with Michael and Sarah. And the petty part of my soul relished the part about a man dressed in his usual clothes with a shawl covering everything. Be sure to walk close to George's desk, sipping a cup of coffee, chat a little with colleagues around, enjoy your time. You are a good husband. I hope George and his new wife and George's mother get everything they have coming to them. Please enjoy your peaceful lives away from all that toxicity. My two oldest kids are in college and working part-time to earn spending money. They live at home and we pay for their tuition, cars, insurance, and basically everything except their spending money. I have a small construction company and run a crew of about 15 men, including my son. Lately, we've been mainly doing roofing jobs. My son's job is to help remove the old shingles, pick up any shingles that miss the dumpster, and help prep the roof. Once the installation starts, he delivers a steady stream of shingles, nails, and other materials to the nailers. It's a dangerous and challenging job, so I pay him about $25 an hour. My daughter works as a cashier, but most of the time she's standing at the self-checkout lanes and rarely behind the register. She's paid about $15 an hour. Last weekend, my son bought his girlfriend a new iPhone for Valentine's Day, and he was talking about the restaurant he would take her to. Since it's an expensive phone and restaurant, my daughter asked where he got the money. That led to how much I paid him, and she got mad. He's been working with me for about four months, but she's never shown any interest in what we do or asked anything about his job or pay, so it surprised her. The short version of a week-long argument in our house is that she thinks it's unfair that he's making so much more than she is. I offered her the same hourly wage if she wanted to join her brother on the roof, but she went once and didn't finish the day. Instead, she wants us to compensate for the difference in their paychecks. My wife thinks I should find an easier job like just letting her pick up the shingles that miss the dumpster. I said, that is an easier job, and I'm not paying her $25 an hour for a minimum wage job. I told her she could make as much as her brother, but she didn't want to carry the heavy, dirty shingles. So now both women are giving me the silent treatment. Last night, my wife went so far as to eat dinner with our daughter before my son and I got home in six and later went to bed without saying a word to me all night. Am I the idiot for not filling the pay gap? Edit. My wife doesn't work. She stays home and cares for our younger kids. I didn't make it clear, but our daughter works for a grocery store, not for me. I have a very small company with 15 men. I have two crews on large jobs or three on smaller jobs. There's no bookkeeping or other positions she can do because I do those on the weekends. There were only the construction positions. None of our kids are interested in taking over my company, and it'll close when I retire. Our son just got accepted into dental school, and our daughter's almost done with her education. Our younger kids have their own dreams. Not the idiot. This is a valuable lesson for both of your children, who must rely on themselves to earn what they want. How would your son feel if his sister, who quit the same more taxing job he performs daily, got a free ride because she stomped her feet and threw a tantrum? And how would your daughter behave in the cruel world if you gave in now? She would go up to people she isn't related to and demand things she hasn't earned or turn down key career opportunities because she thinks she can 
Anne should start at the top right away. And their mother, holy cow, she needs to set her perspective as an adult straight or maybe get some roof time in. I hate to reread it, but his daughter doesn't even work for him. She works for a totally different employer. The entitlement is gross. OP, you're the only sane adult here. Some things must be learned and not twisted at home to create the wrong expectations regarding the real world. Wonder what mom would say if the daughter was doing complex office tasks and making more than their son. OP, your wife isn't doing feminism any favors. If your daughter can do the work but chooses not to, that's her choice. I tell my kids, choose your consequences. You've offered your daughter the opportunity to make the same pay as your son. She's chosen her consequence. So, I, 23 male, am dating Kelly, 25 female. Kelly has two very lovely mothers, Gina, 64, and Stacy, 71, with whom I get along quite well. The problem relevant to this post is that Stacy has a history of lying about things both serious and not serious, which Kelly's complained to me about a few times. While the lying does bother me, mainly because it hurts Kelly's feelings and stresses her out, Kelly says she's trying to let it go and has just come to accept it as part of her mother's personality. I went to run errands with Stacy last week, and when she forgot her wallet, I thought it was a genuine mistake. She is in her 70s. She's forgetting things. It's no big deal. I'll buy her the couple of things she needs, and she'll get it back to me when she can. It wasn't until later that day when I was alone with Kelly and recounting my day that she stopped me and asked if Stacy had me pay for something. I said yes, and Kelly explained that she does this to everybody if they agree to go with her somewhere and she has or wants to buy something. She claims she forgot her wallet, asks you to pay, and promises to pay you back but rarely follows through. This was upsetting to hear, as I also don't like to be lied to and hadn't experienced Stacy lying to me yet. It's also not even about money for Stacy, as she has quite a bit to her name, no debt, and Gina pays most of the bills. Anyway, yesterday, Stacy asked me to come with her again for errands because she needed to pick up some things and they were too heavy for her to handle. I agreed and before we walked out the door, I said, oh wait, I forgot something and went and grabbed my jacket. I asked her if she was sure she also had everything she needed, specifically listing her wallet, keys, phone, and she said yes. I asked if she had checked before we stepped outside, and she said yes again. So on we went, and after the initial errands, we stopped at the drugstore. She asked me to grab her something while I was inside, claiming she had forgotten her wallet again. The conversation went like this. Me, I thought you said you had everything you needed before we left. Her. I did. I guess I was wrong. Me. You said you checked. Her. I did. Me. So, did you lie to me about having your wallet? Or did you lie to me about checking for it? Her. I don't know what you're talking about. Me. Do you really not have it with you? Or are you lying about that too? Her. Why are you having this attitude with me? Me. Why did you lie to me? Her. It's not a big deal. If you don't want to help me, I'm going home. Me, I don't have an attitude. I'm just not going to deal with you lying to me. Lying has consequences. She was angry to say the least and gave me the cold shoulder after this. Kelly says she hasn't come out of her room since we got back from errands yesterday. Did I go overboard here? Not the idiot, obviously. This is her long habit and she isn't used to being called out for it. She's avoiding people because she's both embarrassed and angry. If you wanted her to rethink her habit, then you succeeded. Stacy may not even realize what game she's playing. When she says, I forgot my wallet, what she means is, please buy this for me. Gina hasn't figured this out yet, as has Kelly. They either pay or don't. I suggest you do the same in the future, although I suspect it may be a while before she tries this again with you. Good for you for refusing to be scammed a second time. Stacy messed around and found out. Be prepared to be treated badly and or be iced out by her from now on. My grandmother was a chronic liar, and at least in my experience, just not playing along worked well, if not better than confronting her. Just, nope, I don't have money to buy you something. 
a few times and moved on. Just wise to make sure you're not creating drama for your girlfriend.